guys. Welcome to episode 24. You guys are getting a treat today. There's probably about, I'm not gonna say how many videos we're doing today yet, but you guys will see. Um, so, next video, episode 24, we are taking a look at the M113 Armored Personnel Carrier, APC. Um, yeah, a very reputable vehicle. Uh, you guys have seen my video on the M59, I believe. Uh, pretty sure, yes, I did a video on the M59. So we're looking at its replacement here today. Uh, this one's long overdue, so we're going to hop into the hiss of this vehicle, and we are going to get right into it. Also now, before you guys roast me too about me being not in the proper uniform for this vehicle, I actually am. This vehicle was developed to replace the M59, the aging M59, basically this, but a big hunk of a brick and a little bit bigger and a little bit slower. So, Army to start developing a new APC, and this is what came out of it, the M113 our personnel carrier, the replacement for the M15. So as I said, developed out of that was this M113 right here. So this first came into service in 1960 and has been in service ever since. So we don't have to go over its great repertoire and say, oh, it's in service with this country, this, this, and this, and this. We can just say it's been in the service since 1960 and still in active US military service. It's all combat in Vietnam and uh, nudge, nudge, hint, hint, wink, wink. There is a variant of this with a Gatling gun that you guys might see here very shortly called the M163. This thing had so many variants of it produced, it's ridiculous. They have mortar care variants, they have Gatling gun variants, they just have armored personnel carriers, regular. There's so many different variants of this that you can see, it's ridiculous. So we're just gonna stick with our guns and go with the M113 today. So that's kind of the history, saw action of Vietnam. Pretty much any combat service that the US military has seen since 1960 and has seen service in. So Vietnam, uh, the Korean axe murder incident, Panama, uh, Grenada, Gulf War, Desert Storm, Desert Shield, even freaking uh, Somalia. It's been, in, it's been in every conflict that the US military has been involved in that needed ground support and ground troops. This would have been the backbone of your cavalry and armored force. So, and like I said, it's still in service today and some of these were sent to Iraq. Um, this one's actually representing one that was in Iraq. Um, but like I said, it has had Many variants are produced since the 1960s. So, without further ado, let's hop into the tour of the vehicle. So obviously it has this very signature uh, kind of wedge slash box shape. Uh, that's also because this vehicle is amphibious. This vehicle is amphibious, just like how we've gone over with the Sheridan before. You can put like basically scuba kits on this thing or whatever, and it can forward across rivers and all that fun stuff. Right here, uh, unfortunately this one is not open, but right here you just flick the switch open, you'll have access to your engine. So for this, the engine is actually gonna be in the front for the tour of the vehicle. So you guys aren't out there, you actually look in the back. So a bit different today, but you know, for this video specifically. So, the engine will be up here in front. You had two uh, Continental diesel engines that gave it about uh, about like 480 horsepower. You had two little mini engines in here that powered this vehicle. This thing get up about 40 on a good day, usually. Take off the speed governor. You have people going down the Autobahn in Germany in the 80s at like 60 miles an hour. So these things could cruise. They could move pretty good. Right here, uh, this shows us kind of a later model of the M113. You have smoke grenade launchers right here. So you'd have a smoke grenade output launcher right here. Um, you have a little, this little stowage panel right here for equipment and stuff like that. We're adding uh, extra kit right here. This would just kind of hold and prop open the hatch and just kind of add support for the 50 cal as well. So it can act as a barrel rest and support for the engine hatch here. Uh, you have little hooks right here. You can hook bags and panels and all kinds of stuff like that. There are even versions of these that have ERA armor. So you can add explosive reactive armor on these. Obviously you're not going to see that on this one. So. You got your front drive lights right here. These are your two drive lights. You have the blackout marker right here. Blackout markers there. Commander's hatch. So this crew, this would have technically a crew of 14. Now, why do you say 14? Well, you have a commander and you have a driver. 
your commander would sit right here. Uh, commander would actually sit right up here. So if you guys get a shot of that hatch right there, commander would sit here. This is your driver right here. Your driver would sit chilling in this spot. He would operate the vehicle. Your commander would be right there. Commander would have a 50 cal. Driver could throw a machine gun on there too if he wanted to. If they wanted to be extra about it. Um, and then you got iron bolt lifting plugs on each side just like that. These are actually would normally be periscopes. You can see the welded shot here, but these would be periscopes for the driver to look out. He could also look through his big periscope up there. Um, and down here, so this one isn't outfitted with the kit, but this is, there would be usually um, a fold down piece or a fold up piece that would, that would uh, make this amphibious. So it would come from down here, it would either fold up on front of this, give it extra armor or fold down for like a fording kit kind of deal. Here you got some tow pencils right here in the front. You have the front fenders and the front tracks. So this is designated a med vehicle right here. This we're actually outside the medical battalion right now, but um, these could be used from anywhere from cavalry, infantry, armor, anybody and their mother could use these. There have been so many of these produced and so many in service. So that does it for the front. Uh, there's not really a turret on this, but we're gonna hop on top anyway. Let's go. All right, so hopping on top of uh, not really a turret, but I mean, I guess you could kind of call it, these could kind of have a turret. You could have a little guy up here with a machine gun and a little like uh, rotated machine gun on top with armor plate. So I guess you could count that as a turret. So that's what your commander would be outfitted with. He would either have a 50 cal a Gatling gun or whatever the hell he wanted to have up here. Sometimes they put like three M60s on these things uh, and just have extra firepower. Like I said, first all service in Vietnam were kind of the backbone. Uh, they were like their supply vehicles. And it's your first, uh, the idea of APCs have been around for a little bit to drop troops out of a, basically the back of a vehicle. So you got the half tracks from World War II, you got the M59 APC, uh, you got those early models that were used in Korea. This was specifically used in Vietnam. So in Vietnam, you would have dropped your infantry troops out of the back. You'd have 12 infantry troops in the back. How we were talking about the crew numbers earlier, 12 troops would come running out the back and they could basically provide fire support or run and gun if they needed to. These would have been used on the Thunder Runs Vietnam alongside the Patton tanks that we covered earlier. Got your driver's hatch up here up front. They could either go button up, which means hatch is closed, or they could have hatches open and sit and drive from right here. You have uh, kind of ventilation and exhaust right here for the engine. Um, back here, so this panel that the cameraman's on top of, um, that would just be internal access that could get inside the APC. But on the other models, like I said, the version of a mortar carrier, that's where you would see kind of like the mortars come out of. Um, on this particular variant, I think this would be for a medical purpose or something like that. But you could have uh, a mortar in here, all kinds of different stuff. That's where that hatch would be used for. Um, to get access to the engine, would, like I said, was that front panel right there. You got basically just hooks on the side to hang your bags and extra equipment. Because this is a medical vehicle, there's kind of all kinds of different things that you can use it for. Um, and you got all the little kind of hooks on the side. You see all those over there for extra bags of equipment. And just like we saw, what a quanky dink. This looks very familiar to the tank that we just covered. This would be your ventilation and commo stuff back here. Um, you could have like 30 antennas hanging off this thing. Because um, sometimes these are even used as command vehicles. And um, basically, you'd have like a bunch of antennas and radios inside these things. So, that pretty much does it for the turret, quote unquote. Uh, with that, we'll hop into the side. All right, guys, so it's hot. It's like, it's actually, so it's December, what? You know, it's December 9th, they were filming this video. And it's like, sporting the ultimate Vietnam look right now. I'm chilling with the uh, boonie cover on and the PC. But anyway, I'll be into the side of the vehicle. Uh, right here we got a torsion bar suspension system, just like you would see your main battle tanks of the 50s, 60s, anything like that. Now a torsion bar suspension system, five road wheel system here. As you can see, it's got the five road wheels right here. And this one's a little bit different because the drive spot gets actually in the front, so it doesn't go with that main battle tank doctrine. But this isn't exactly a main battle tank. It's like I said, it's an armored person up here. So you got the front drive spot up here, and the support wheel is just there in the back. And I think if we look underneath this fender here, uh, the little support wheels are actually back behind um, this wheel right here, if you guys can take a look at that. And this is basically just a glorified mud flap on the side. This is that because your side skirts. This is just made of rubber, as you guys can see that. Um, arm on this thing wasn't too good. Probably have about an inch to about half an inch. So we're looking out on the side right here. We well, can see the thickness of my finger. About an inch right here on the side, right here. About an inch. Uh, the front would have an inch, maybe a little bit thicker. Like I said, they could add uh, urban kits onto this, an explosive reactive armor, giving it extra thickness, about effective thickness, about like three to four inches on the side. But um, that pretty much says that you have stuff to hang off the side here, like 
your, uh, your bags and equipment, all that stuff, you would see the bags like slung on the sides of these things. Uh, since this is a medical vehicle, probably a stretcher or two on here, extra rucks, extra bags, things like that. So that does it for the side, you guys are gonna hop in the back. So hopping into the back of the vehicle right here, so up to the back, you have 12 troops in the back. This panel door would actually just slide open with this right here. Actually, this one is unlocked, but they welded the door shut. So you would do this to unlock it. You'd have troops spill out the back. You'd have about 12 inch troops out the back here. Um, you have your rear blackout markers, rear tail lights right here. Uh, some of your exhausts will come out here as well. You see this fork right here. Um, you have a tow filter right here. So we didn't get to see it on the patent, but it's kind of similar to what the patent would have. Uh, it's the tow filter right here. You actually have the pin coming out right there, and this would just open up for towing like that. You have towing lugs here. They need to tow or pull something or get towed themselves. Down here, you have the rear fenders. This would just be like a little storage panel right here. You can have a Pioneer kit on the back here um, and hang bags, all kinds of sort of stuff from here. And you would have radios and comm equipment back here as well. You have antennas all sticking up and all that. But, so the engine was in the front, so this is kind of weird. In the back, you're just looking at the true patch pretty much. And right here where it's welded shut, they would usually actually have a kit where it would have like bullet resistant glass, so they'd have one little vision slit to look out the back. Uh, little ghetto but uh you'd have 12 guys looking through a hatch about that big and that wide but that's what they would do different kind of people different kind of day all right so that pretty much covers the back of this vehicle with that we're going to hop in the closeout Thank you guys for watching this one. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.